back everyone. We are cruising through this app. We have our images downloading, we have our coin data downloading, and in this awesome video, we're gonna set up a search bar. Now, we're gonna save some of the logic for actually filtering when we type in the search bar for the next video, but in this one, we're gonna focus a lot just on the actual visual, the UI aspect of our search bar. Because we're gonna create a custom search bar that's gonna look really cool and fit the theme of our app. We're also gonna make it so that it's reusable so that we can use it on more than just one screen. All right, welcome back everyone. I am back in our Xcode project, of course. In the last video, we set up our file manager so that we could save images to the device so that we don't download the same image twice. And here I have a final version of our app. So we've set up pretty much this whole list here, but we have not yet set up this bar here, this search bar. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. And, and it is pretty simple, but we're just gonna set it up quickly, add some formatting, and then connect it into our view model. All right, so let's jump in to the home view. Let's click resume. And it's actually gonna go, it's gonna go above this list. So between, uh, the header and the column titles here. But we're gonna use this search bar on a couple different screens in our app. We're gonna use it on this screen as well as um, another screen where we can type in to add coins to our portfolio. So because we're gonna reuse it, I don't wanna put it inside the home view. We're gonna make it its own view and we're gonna add it into our components folder here on the right. So on this components folder, I'm gonna right click it, create a new file. It's gonna be a Swift UI view, and I'm gonna call this search bar view. Click create. Click resume once you're inside here. So let's start out here with a simple H stack. All right, let's add on the left side, let's add an image with a system name. We're gonna use a system icon, and it's called magnifying glass. Again, if you are unfamiliar with these system icons, there's an app called the SF Symbols app. Which you, if you just Google FS Symbols app, it comes directly from Apple. It comes right from the Apple homepage and you can download the app for free. And basically has all of the potential icons that come default in Xcode. And we're just gonna use the one called uh, magnifying glass, which is this plain little magnifying glass here. But when you're building your apps, this comes in handy because there are so many different icons that we can use. And it's super helpful to use these built-in icons because they're also resizable and we can change their colors. So if you're just starting out and you don't have a professional designer on your team, I highly, highly recommend using the built-in symbols that come with Xcode. All right, so we're gonna use the magnifying glass here and let's make it gray. So let's give it a foreground color. Let's use color.theme.secondary text. On the right of the magnifying glass, let's add a text field. This is where we're gonna actually type in the text. And let's use the string protocol and binding. And the title here is actually placeholder. So let's make it say search by name or symbol, dot, dot, dot. And then we need to bind this text. And we're gonna bind it into our view model in one second. But for right now, at the top here, let's create an at state var. We'll call it search text of type string. And we'll set it equal to a blank string to start. We will bind it into our text field. So we'll say money sign search text. And we should see the text field now pop up. All right, let's add a little bit of formatting. So on this whole H stack, I'm gonna give it a font of headline. And then around the edges, let's add some padding. And then after that padding, let's add a background. So we'll say dot background. And the background is going to be a rounded rectangle. We'll give it a corner radius of maybe 25. And let's change the color so that it is dot fill with color dot theme dot the background color. And then I want to add a little bit of shadow so we can see where the background actually ends. So let's add a dot shadow. Let's use the color radius completion here. I'm going to put these on separate lines. And we'll leave this as 10 X is zero, Y is zero. And the color right now it's black, which we can see it looks really strong. Um, it's almost too strong to look like natural in our app. So let's use instead color.theme.accent color. And that's also pretty strong. So let's call it dot opacity with maybe 0 0.15. 
So it's like a very light shadow, which we can see here. I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys. There is a little bit of shadow outside the edges of this. And that's where we can, and that's why we can see where it ends. And then finally, after we add this background, let's call some padding just to push it in from the edges. And this is looking pretty good. All right, so if I click the play on the simulator here and I go to start typing, I want to make sure that this typing text here is actually our accent color as well. So on the text field, let's give it a foreground color of color.theme.accent. And we can't really tell the difference because our accent color is black when we're in light mode, um, but this is now the accent color. So if I actually switch, let's switch it to uh, dark mode. So let's actually switch our app here to dark mode because we'll see it a little bit better. We'll do color scheme dark. When we start out, the text in the text field is gray, but as we type, it's actually going to be our accent color, which is pink when we're in dark mode. And when we do start typing and we get this pink text, I want this magnifying glass to also light up to be that color, that pink color. So on the magnifying glass, we're going to change this color here. We're going to, we're first going to check if search bar text dot is empty. So if there is no text in the search bar, then we're going to use secondary text. Otherwise, we're going to use color dot theme dot accent. All right, so now if I start typing, the magnifying glass will turn pink as I type, and then if it goes back to blank, it will go back to gray. All right, the next thing I wanna do is when we start typing, I wanna have a little X pop up on the right side of this search bar so that we can like click the X button to clear out this text if we want to. That's just like a pretty common UI feature that uh, I think users expect these days, like a clear button. So on this text field, let's add an overlay. And in the overlay, we're going to add an image with a system name. And this time, I'm going to jump into our SF Symbols app. I'm going to type in xmark. And we're going to use the xmark.circle.fill. So I can right click it and copy the name. And jump back into Xcode. xmark.circle.fill. All right, let's give it a foreground color of color.theme.accent because this is only going to show up when we are typing and when we are typing it's that pink color so we want this to be pink as well. Let's align it to the right side of the text field. So on the overlay we can actually add an alignment of trailing. Now it's over here on the right. Let's give this image a little bit of padding so that the tappable area is a little bit bigger, the frame. And because the padding now pushed into the left, let's offset it back to the right a tiny bit. So we'll call dot offset and I'll make the X of 10. We don't need the Y here. All right. So if I add a background color onto this, which we're not going to use, well, I'll just do color dot red. I just want to show you guys that um, I added this extra padding because we're going to add a tap gesture onto this image. And if we don't have this padding and this offset, if I comment it out, um, the tappable area is really, really small and it might get frustrating for users to try to tap this little tiny X and maybe if it's tapping like over here, it might not work. So by adding this extra little padding, the tappable area is now much bigger and it's going to be a better user experience. And let's get rid of the background color quickly and we're going to add one more we'll call dot opacity. And if, and we're going to check again if the search text is empty. We'll say search text dot is empty. If it's empty, opacity will be 0.0 because .0, then we don't need the X to show. But if it's not empty, we'll do 1.0. All right, so in, right now it's not showing. If I type any letters, it's going to be showing. And if I go back, it's now gone. Uh, so that's working perfectly. And finally, let's add a tap gesture onto it. So um, on the image, so we're going to do it on the image, not on the text field, on the image down here. We'll add a tap gesture. And the first thing we're going to do when we tap the image is set the search text back to a blank string. So we'll say search text equals blank string. Let's test that out. Let's type some text in here. Let's tap it. And we're back to our starting state. Perfect. And let's just make sure that it looks good in both light and dark mode. So going down to, so going down to the preview here, I'm going to add a group, open the brackets. Let's copy and paste this twice. 
Let's make the first one in light mode. Let's also give it actually a preview layout dot size that fits. Because we don't need like the entire screen for this. And we'll stop the live preview here. Cool. So we can see that it looks good in light mode and it looks good in dark mode as well. And finally, uh, we actually want to change out this search text. So instead of creating this at state search text here, we want to connect it to something else in our app. And when we add this search bar view, we are actually going to be in the same environment. So we could pull out the environment view model and access it directly with the at environment object and call our view model and then pull it directly from the environment. And that would be great, but that would kind of limit the reusability for this search bar view because then the search bar view would only be allowed to be used in environments when we have that environment object available. So to make it a little bit more reusable, right? So instead of creating that environment object, we are just going to change out this variable here and make this binding. So we're going to bind to the environment object, but we're going to do it outside of this view. And all we need to do now is just get rid of the initial blank string here. And this will now be connected into the rest of our app. So the code still stays the same here, except now we can add the search bar view in any view or environment in our app that just has a string that we can bind to. And that's much more reusable in our app. So scrolling down, let's just fix the previews quickly. Let's click fix on both of these and we don't actually need this to work. So we're just going to call constant here and we'll make it a blank string for both of these. All right. So now every time we add a search bar view, we just need to bind to a search text, which should be a string. And let's jump into our home view. Let's click resume here. And above the column titles, we are going to add a search bar view. Open the parentheses and we need a binding string for this search text. So we're going to put the so we're going to actually put that binding in our view model here now. So the home view is reliant on having an environment object. And that's okay because this home view is specific to having this environment. But our search bar view, we didn't want to have it to rely on the environment object. So instead, we made it binding to a string. And then here, we're going to connect it back into our view model. I hope you guys understand the difference there. It's very subtle, but the search bar view is much more dynamic now and universal to be used throughout our app. So in our home view model, I'm going to right click, jump to the definition. Let's create an at published var. Let's call it search text of type string and let's set it equal to a blank string for a second. I'm going to click the back button. I'm going to go to the search bar view and let's now bind it. So let's and let's first press command shift K to clean and rebuild our code. Again, that's the product clean build folder. And now let's bind it to that new variable. So in this search text here, we're going to use the money sign for binding. We'll call the view model for VM dot search text that we just added. Let's click resume on the canvas. And if we did it right, we should now see that search bar pop up. Awesome. So I hope you guys now see this search bar as well. And if I click into it, we can type. And when I type, the text is the accent color. The X mark shows up. If I click the X, it then goes away. I'm going to run this quickly on a actual simulator. So let's click play to run it onto a simulator. There's a couple small changes that we want to make because when we run it on a simulator, as you'll see in a second, uh, we actually need to deal with the keyboard as well. So if I click onto this to start typing, the keyboard should pop up. And if the keyboard does not pop up, you should be able to press Command and K to force it to pop up in the simulator. We can also click on the IO up here go to keyboard and then toggle that software keyboard. So the first thing I notice here is that we, we get this auto correct here that comes by default. I guess Apple wants us to use this when we're typing these cryptocurrency names. Uh, chances are they're not part of the standard English dictionary. So let's disable this auto correct here. And we do that very simply by going into our search bar view and on the text field, I'm just going to do it. Let's do it uh, after the foreground color. Let's call dot disable auto correction true. I'm going to run it one more time. 
Let's start typing. And when I click on this, you can see that that auto correction bar is now gone, which is what we wanted. This looks a little better because it gives us a little more screen to actually view the list as we're typing. And then if we're typing, let's just type in something here. If I click the return button, it will dismiss the keyboard, which works. But if I click this X button, it will not dismiss the keyboard. And I actually want that X button to also dismiss the keyboard. So to do that, we need to create an extension for our application. And this code is a little funky, but it is just common. You can find it on Stack Overflow. We're gonna create an extension. So in our extensions file, let's right click, create a new file. This will be a Swift file, and we're gonna extend UI application. Let's click create. In here, we'll create an extension for UI application. And we actually don't have access to it, so we need to import Swift UI. We'll extend UI application. And we're gonna create a func called uh, end editing. Open close parentheses, open the brackets. And in here we are going to send action. And we're gonna use the hashtag or the pound sign selector. And in here we can add an objective C function and we're going to call UI responder dot resign first responder. This will basically dismiss the keyboard and end any other editing on our device. Um, two will be nil from is nil and four is nil. Now this little bit of code, even I just like Google and find online. Um, this send action is not something that we are doing pretty much in our app. All you really need to know is that when we call in editing, it's going to resign the first responder, which is basically in our case, the same thing as dismissing the keyboard. So now all we need to do is call UI application dot end editing. Let's jump back into our uh, search bar view on the tap gesture. Before we set the search text equal to a blank string, let's also call and let's press command shift K to clean and rebuild. And then in here, let's call UI application dot shared. This is a singleton instance of the UI application. And then let's call dot end editing, which is our new function. Well, let's click play one more time on the simulator. And this time, if we are typing, let's type something. And if we click this X button, hopefully it dismisses our keyboard, which it did. It's the exact function that we wanted to happen. All right, guys, we now got our search bar set up, but of course, when we are typing, it's not actually doing anything in on the list here. So in the next video, we're gonna add some filtering so that, so that when we do type, we can actually filter for the coins that we are searching for. All right, guys, thank you for watching. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.